Act three of Cymbeline by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act three, scene one. Britain, a hall in Cymbeline's palace. Enter in state, Cymbeline, Queen, Clotten, and Lords at one door, and at another, Caius Lucius and attendants now say what would augustus caesar with us when julius caesar whose remembrance yet lives in men's eyes and will to ears and tongues be theme and hearing ever was in this britain and conquered it cassibion thine uncle famous in caesar's praises now it less and in his feet deserving it to him and his succession granted rome a tribute yearly three thousand pounds which by thee lately is left untended and to kill the marvel shall be so ever there be many caesars as such another julius britain is a world by itself and we will nothing pay for wearing their own noses that opportunity which then they had to take from us to resume we have again remember sir my liege the kings your ancestors together with the natural bravery of your isle which stands as neptune's park ribbed and paled in with rocks unscalable and roaring waters with sands that will not bear your enemies boats but suck them up to the topmast a kind of conquest caesar made here but made not here his brag of came and saw and overcame with shame the first that ever touched him he was carried from off our coast twice beaten and his shipping poor ignorant baubles on our terrible seas like eggshells moved upon their surges cracked as easily against our rocks for joy whereof the famed cassibelan who was once at point o oh, jiglet fortune to master caesar's sword made Ludstown with rejoicing fires bright and britain strut with courage come there's no more tribute to be paid our kingdom is stronger than it was at that time and as i said there is no more such caesars other of them may have crooked noses but to owe such straight arms none son let your mother end we have yet many among us can grope as hard as cassabelan i do not say i am one but i have a hand why tribute why should we pay tribute if caesar can hide the sun from us with a blanket or put the moon in his pocket we will pay him tribute for light else sir no more tribute pray you now you must know till the injurious romans did extort this tribute from us we were free caesar's ambition which swelled so much that it did almost stretch the sides of the world against all colour here did put the yoke upon us which to shake off becomes a warlike people which we reckon ourselves to be we do say then to caesar our ancestor was that Molmutius, which ordained our laws, whose use the sword of Caesar hath too much mangled, whose repair and franchise shall by the power we hold be a good deed, though Rome be therefore angry. Molmutius made our laws, who was the first of Britain, which did put his brows within a golden crown, and called himself a king. I am sorry, Cymbeline, 
that I am to pronounce Augustus Caesar, Caesar, that has more kings as servants than thyself domestic officers, thine enemy, received from me, then. War and confusion in Caesar's name pronounce I against thee. Look for fury not to be resisted, thus defied, I thank thee for myself. Thou art welcome, Caius. Thy Caesar knighted me. My youth I spent much under him. Of him I gathered honour, which he to seek of me again perforce behoves me keep at utterance. I am perfect that the Pannonians and Dalmatians for their liberties are now in arms, a precedent which not to read would show the Britons cold so caesar shall not find them let proof speak his majesty bids you welcome make pastime with us a day or two or longer if you seek us afterwards in other terms you shall find us in a salt water girdle <laughs> if you beat us out of it it is yours if you fall in the adventure, a crow shall bear the better for you, and there's an end. So, sir. I know your master's pleasure, and he mine. All the remain is welcome. Exeunt. Scene two. Another room in the palace. Enter Pisanio with a letter. How? Of adultery? Wherefore write you not what monsters her accuser? Leonatus? Oh, master, what a strange infection is fallen into thy ear! What false Italian as poisonous tongued as handed hath prevailed on thy too ready hearing? Disloyal? No! She's punished for her truth and undergoes more goddess like than wife like such assaults as would take in some virtue o oh, my master thy mind to her is now as low as were thy fortunes how that i should murder her upon the love and truth and vows which i have made to thy command i her her blood if it be so to do good service never let me be counted serviceable how look i that i should seem to lack humanity so much as this fact comes to do it the letter that i have sent her by her own command shall give the opportunity oh damned paper black as the ink that's on thee senseless bauble art thou a fiadori for this act and look'st so virgin like without lo here she comes I am ignorant in what I am commanded. Enter Imogen. How now, Pisanio? Madam, here is a letter from my lord. Who? Thy lord? That is my lord. Leonatus, O oh, learned indeed were that astronomer that knew the stars as I his characters. He'd lay the future open. You good gods, let what is here contained relish of love of my lord's health of his content yet not that we two are asunder let that grieve him some griefs are medicinable that is one of them for it doth physic love of his content all but in that good wax thy leave blessed be you bees that make these locks of counsel lovers and men in dangerous bonds pray not alike though forfeiters you cast in prison yet you clasp young cupid's tables good news gods reads justice and your father's wrath should he take me in his dominion could not be so cruel to me as you o oh, the dearest of creatures would even renew me with your eyes <sighs> take notice that i am in cambria at milford haven what your own love will out of this advice you follow so he wishes you all happiness that remains loyal to his vow and your increasing in love 
leonatus posthumus oh for a horse with wings hear'st thou pisanio he is at milford haven read and tell me how far this thither if one of mean affairs may plod it in a week why may not i glide thither in a day then true pisanio who longs like me to see thy lord who longs oh let me bait but not like me yet longs but in a fainter kind oh not like me for mine's beyond beyond say and speak thick love's counsellor should fill the bores of hearing to the smothering of the sense how far it is to this same blessed milford and by the way tell me how wales was made so happy as to inherit such a haven but first of all how we may steal from hence and for the gap that we shall make in time from our hence going and our return to excuse but first how get hence why should excuse be born or ear be got we'll talk of that hereafter prithee speak how many score of miles may we well ride twixt hour and hour one score twixt sun and sun madam it's enough for you and too much too why one that rode to his execution man could never go so slow i have heard of riding wagers where horses have been nimbler than the sands that run in the clock's behalf but this is foolery go bid my woman feign a sickness say she'll home to her father and provide me presently a riding suit no costlier than would fit a franklin's housewife madam your best consider i see before me man nor here nor here nor what ensues but have a fog in them that i cannot look through away i prithee do as i bid thee there's no more to say accessible is none but milford way Exeunt. scene three wales a mountainous country with a cave enter from the cave Bellarius, guiderius and arviragus following a goodly day not to keep house with such whose roofs as low as ours stoop boys this gate instructs you how to adore the heavens and bows you to a morning's holy office the gates of monarchs are arched so high that giants may jet through and keep their impious turbans on without good morrow to the sun hail thou fair heaven we house i the rocks yet use thee not so hardly as prouder livers do hail heaven hail heaven now for our mountain sport up to yonder hill your legs are young i'll tread these flats consider when you above perceive me like a crow that is a place which lessens and sets off and you may then revolve what tales i have told you of courts of princes of the tricks in war this service is not service so being done but being so allowed to apprehend thus draws us a profit from all things we see and often to our comfort shall we find the sharded beetle in a safer hold than is the full winged eagle or oh, this life is nobler than attending for a check richer than doing nothing for a bribe prouder than rustling in unpaid-for silk such gain the cap of him that makes him fine yet keeps his book uncrossed no life to ours out of your proof you speak we poor and fledged have never winged from view of the nest nor know not what airs from home haply this life is best if quiet life be best sweeter to you that have a sharper known well corresponding with your stiff age but unto us it is a cell of ignorance travelling a bed a prison for a debtor that not dares to stride a limit what should we speak of when we are old as you when we shall hear the rain and wind beat dark december how in this our pinching cave shall we discourse the freezing hours away we have seen nothing we are beastly subtle as the fox for prey like warlike as the wolf for what we eat our valour is to chase what flies our cage we make a choir as doth the prisoned bird 
and sing our bondage freely how you speak did you but know the city's usuries and felt them knowingly the art of the court as hard to leave as keep whose top to climb is certain falling or so slippery that the fear's as bad as falling the toil of the war a pain that only seems to seek out danger in the name of fame and honour which dies in the search and hath as oft a slanderous epitaph as record of fair act nay many times doth ill deserve by doing well what's worse must curtsy at the censure oh boys this story the world may read in me my body's marked with roman swords and my report was once first with the best of note cymbeline loved me and when a soldier was the theme my name was not far off then was i as a tree whose boughs did bend with fruit but in one night a storm of robbery call it what you will shook down my mellow hangings nay my leaves and left me bare to weather uncertain favour my fault being nothing as i have told you oft but that two villains whose false oaths prevailed before my perfect honour swore to cymbeline i was confederate with the romans so followed my banishment and this twenty years this rock and these domains have been my world where i have lived at honest freedom paid more pious debts to heaven than in all the fore end of my time but up to the mountains this is not hunter's language he that strikes the venison first shall be the lord of the feast to him the other two shall minister and we will fear no poison which attends in place of greater state i'll meet you in the valleys exeunt guiderius and arviragus how hard it is to hide the sparks of nature these boys know little they are sons to the king nor cymbeline dreams that they are alive they think they are mine and though train it up thus meanly in the cave wherein they bow their thoughts do hit the roofs of palaces and nature prompts them in simple and low things to prince it much beyond the tricks of others this polydor the heir of cymbeline and britain who the king his father called guiderius jove when on my three-foot stool i sit and tell the warlike feats i have done his spirits fly out into my stories say thus mine enemy fell and thus i set my foot on his neck even then the princely blood flows in his cheek he sweats strains his young nerves and puts himself in posture that acts my words the younger brother cadwell once aviragus in as like a figure strikes life into my speech and shows much more his own conceiving hark the game is roused o oh, cymbeline heaven and my conscience knows thou didst unjustly banish me whereon at three and two years old i stole these babes thinking to bar thee of succession as thou reft me of my lands eurythily thou wast their nurse they took thee for their mother and every day to honour to her grave myself belarius that am morgan called they take for natural father the game is up exit scene four country near milford haven enter pisanio and imogen thou toldst me when we came from horse the place was near at hand never longed my mother so to see me first as i have now pisanio man where is posthumus what is in thy mind that makes thee stare thus wherefore breaks that sigh from the inward of thee one but painted thus would be interpreted a thing perplexed beyond self-explication put thyself into a haviour of less fear ere wildness vanquish my staider senses what is the matter why tenderest thou that paper to me with a look untender 
if be summer news smile to it before if winterly thou needst but keep that countenance still my husband's hand that drug damned italy has outcrafted him and he's at some hard point speak man thy tongue may take off some extremity which to read would be even mortal to me please you read and you shall find me wretched man a thing the most disdained of fortune imogen reads thy mistress pisanio hath played the trumpet in my bed the testimonies whereof lie bleeding in me i speak not out of weak surmises but from proof as strong as my grief and as certain as i expect my revenge that part thou pisanio must act for me if thy faith be not tainted with the breach of hers let thine own hands take away her life i shall give thee opportunity at milford haven she hath my letter for the purpose where if thou fear to strike and to make me certain it is done thou art the pander to her dishonour and equally to me disloyal what shall i need to draw my sword the paper hath cut her throat already no tis slander whose edge is sharper than the sword whose tongue outvenoms all the worms of nile whose breath rides on the posting winds and doth belie all corners of the world kings queens and states maids matrons nay the secrets of the grave this viperous slander enters what cheer madam falls to his bed what is it to be false to lie in watch there and to think on him to weep twixt clock and clock if sleep charge nature to break it with a fearful dream of him and cry myself awake that's false to his bed is it alas good lady ay false thy conscience witness Yekimo, thou didst accuse him of incontinency thou then lookst like a villain now methinks thy favours good enough some jay of italy whose mother was her painting hath betrayed him poor i am stale a garment out of fashion and for i am richer than to hang by the walls i must be ripped to pieces with me o oh, man's vows are women's traitors all good seeming by thy revolt o oh husband shall be thought put on for villainy not born where it grows but worn a bait for ladies good madam hear me true honest man being heard like false aeneas were in his time thought false and silence weeping did scandal many a holy tear took pity from most true wretchedness so thou posthumus wilt lay the leaven on all proper men goodly and gallant shall be false and perjured from thy great fail come fellow be thou honest do thou thy master's bidding when thou seest him a little witness my obedience look i draw the sword myself take it and hit the innocent mansion of my love my heart fear not tis empty of all things but grief thy master is not there who was indeed the riches of it do his bidding strike thou mayst be valiant in a better cause but now thou seemst the coward hence vile instrument thou shalt not damn my hand why i must die and if i do not by thy hand thou art no servant of thy masters against self-slaughter there is a prohibition so divine that cravens my weak hand come here's my heart some things are for it soft soft will no defence obedient as the scabbard what is here the scriptures of the loyal leonatus all turned to heresy away away corruptors of my faith you shall no more be stomachers to my heart thus may poor fools believe false teachers though those that are betrayed do feel the treason sharply yet the traitor stands in worse case of woe and thou posthumus thou that didst set up my disobedience against the king my father and make me put into contempt the suits of princely fellows 
shalt hereafter find it is no act of common passage but a strain of rareness and i grieve myself to think when thou shalt be disadged by her that now thou tirest on how thy memory will then be panged by me prithee dispatch the lamb entreats the butcher where's thy knife thou art too slow to do thy master's bidding when i desire it too o oh, gracious lady since i received this command to do this business i have not slept one wink do it and to bed then i'll wake mine eyeballs blind first wherefore then didst undertake it why hast thou abused so many miles with a pretence this place mine action and thine own our horses labour the time inviting thee the perturbed court for my being absent whereunto i never purpose return why hast thou gone so far to be unbent when thou hast taken thy stand the elected dear before thee but to win time to lose so bad employment in the which i have considered of a course good lady hear me with patience talk thy tongue weary speak i have heard i am a strumpet and mine ear therein fall struck can take no greater wound nor tend to bottom that but speak then madam i thought you would not back again most like bringing me here to kill me not so neither but if i were as wise as honest then my purpose would prove well it cannot be but that my master is abused some villain i and singular in his art hath done you both this cursed injury some roman courtesan no on my life i'll give but notice you are dead and sent him some bloody sign of it for tis commanded i should do so you shall be missed at court and that will well confirm it why good fellow what shall i do the while where bide how live or in my life what comfort when i am dead to my husband if you are back to the court no court no father nor no more ado with that harsh noble simple nothing that clotten whose love suit hath been to me as fearful as a siege if not at court then not in britain must you bide where then hath britain all the sun that shines day night are they not but in britain in the world's volume our britain seems as of it but not in it in a great pool a swan's nest prithee think there's livers out of britain i am most glad you think of other place the ambassador lucius the roman comes to milford haven to-morrow now if you could wear a mind dark as your fortune is and but disguise that which to appear itself must not yet be but by self-danger you should tread a course pretty and full of view yea haply near the residence of posthumus so nigh at least that though his actions were not visible yet report should render him hourly to your ear as truly as he moves oh for such means though peril to my modesty not death on it i would adventure well then here's the point you must forget to be a woman change command into obedience fear and niceness the handmaids of all women or more truly woman it pretty self into a waggish courage ready in jibes quick answered saucy and as querulous as the weasel nay you must forget that rarest treasure of your cheek exposing it but oh the harder heart alack no remedy to the greedy touch of common kissing titan and forget your laboursome and dainty trims wherein you made great juno angry nay be brief i see into thy end and am almost a man already first make yourself but like one for thinking this i have already fit tis in my cloak bag doublet hat hose all that answers to them would you in their serving and with what imitation you can borrow from youth of such a season for noble lucius present yourself desire his service 
Tell him we're in your happy, which you'll make him know if that his head have ear in music. Doubtless with joy he will embrace you, for he is honourable and doubling that most holy. Your means abroad, you have me rich, and I will never fail, beginning nor supplement. Thou art all the comfort the gods will diet with me. Prithee, away, there's more to be considered, but we'll even all that good time will give us. This attempt I am soldier to, and will abide it with a prince's courage. Away, I prithee. Well, madam, we must take a short farewell, lest being missed I be suspected of your carriage from the court. My noble mistress, here is a box. I had it from the queen. What's in it is precious. If you are sick at sea or stomach qualmed at land, a dram of this will drive away distemper. To some shade and fit you to your manhood. May the gods direct you to the best. Amen. I thank thee. Exeunt severally. Scene five. A room in Cymbeline's palace. Enter Cymbeline, queen, Clotten, Lucius, lords, and attendants. Thus far, and so farewell. Thanks, royal sir. My emperor hath wrote, I must from hence, and am right sorry that I must report ye my master's enemy. Our subject, sir, will not endure his yoke, and for ourselves to show less sovereignty than they must needs appear unkinglike. So, sir, I desire of you a conduct over land to Milford Haven. Madam, all joy before your grace and you. My lord, you are appointed for that office. The due of honour in no point omit. So, farewell, noble Lucius. Your hand, my lord. Receive it, friendly. Book from this time forth, I wear it as your enemy. Sir, the event is yet to name the winner. Fare you well. Leave not the worthy Lucius, good my lord, till he have crossed the seven. Happiness! Exeunt Lucius and Lords. He goes hence frowning, but it honours us that we have given him cause. "'Tis all the better. "'Ye valiant Britons have their wishes in it. "'Lucius hath wrote already to the Emperor how it goes here. "'It fits us, therefore, rightly our chariots and our horsemen be in readiness. "'The powers that he already hath in Gallia will soon be drawn to head, "'from whence he moves his war for Britain. "'Tis not sleepy business.' but must be looked to speedily and strongly. Our expectation that it would be thus hath made us forward. But, my gentle queen, where is our daughter? She hath not appeared before the Roman, nor to us hath tendered the duty of the day. She looks us like a thing more made of malice than of duty. We have noted it call her before us for we have been too slight in sufferance exit an attendant royal sir since the exile of posthumus most retired hath her life been the cure whereof my lord tis time must do beseech your majesty forbear sharp speeches to her she's a lady so tender of rebukes that words are strokes and strokes death to her re-enter attendant where is she sir how can her contempt be answered please you sir her chambers are all locked and there's no answer that will be given to the loudest of noise we make my lord when last i went to visit her she prayed me to excuse her keeping close whereto constrained by her infirmity she should that duty leave unpaid to you which daily she was bound to proffer this she wished me to make known 
but our great court made me to blame in memory the door's locked not seen of late grant heavens that which i fear prove false exit son i say follow the king that man of hers bisonio her old servant i've not seen these two days go look after exit clotten pisanio thou that stand so for posthumous he hath a drug of mine i pray his absence proceed by swallowing that for he believes it is a thing most precious <laughs> but for her where is she gone haply despair has seized her or winged with fervour of her love she's flown to her desired posthumous gone she is to death or to dishonour and my end can make good use of either <laughs> she being down i have the placing of the british crown re-enter clotten how now my son Dead certain she is fled go in and cheer the king he rages none there come about him queen aside all the better may this night forestall him of the coming day exit all love and data for she's fair and royal and that she had all courtly parts more exquisite than lady lady woman from every one the best she hath and she of all compounded outsells them all a lover therefore but disdaining me and throwing favours on the low posthumous slander so a judgment that what's else rare is choked and in that point i will conclude to hate her nay indeed to be revenged upon her for when fools shall enter pisanio who is here what are you packing sir come hither <laughs> you a precious panda villain where is thy lady in a word, or else thou art straightway with the fiends. Oh, good my lord. Where is thy lady? Oh, oh, poor Jupiter. I will not ask again. Close villain, oh, of this secret from the heart, or rip thy heart to find it. Is she with posthumous? Removes so many weights of baseness, cannot a dram of worth be drawn. Alas, my lord, how can she be with him? when was she missed he is in rome where is she sir come nearer oh no further halting satisfy me home what is become of her oh my all-worthy lord oh worthy villain discover whether our mistress is at once at the next word no more of oh, worthy lord speak all thy silence on the instant is thy condemnation and thy death then sir this paper is the history of my knowledge touching her flight presenting a letter let's see it i will pursue her even to augustus throne pisanio aside or oh, this or perish she is far enough and what he learns by this may prove his travel not her danger Hmm. i'll write to my lord she's dead o oh, imogen safe mayest thou wander safe return again sir is this better true sir as i think it is posthumous hand i know it sir if thou wouldst not be a villain but do me true service undergo those employments wherein i should have cause to use thee with a serious industry that is what villainy so e'er i bid thee do to perform it directly and truly i would think thee an honest man 
thou shouldst neither want my means for thy relief nor my voice for thy preferment well my good lord wilt thou serve me for since patiently and constantly thou hast took to the bare fortune of that beggar posthumus thou canst not in the cause of gratitude but be a diligent follower of mine wilt thou serve me sir i will give me thy hand here's my purse ask any of thy late master's garments in thy possession i have my lord at my lodgings the same suit he wore when he took leave of my lady and mistress the first service thou dost me fetch that suit hither let it be thy first service go i shall my lord exit meet thee at milford avon i forgot to ask him one thing i remember it anon even there the villain posthumous will i kill thee i would these garments were come she said upon a time the bitterness of it on her belch from my heart that she held the very garment of posthumous in more respect than my noble and natural person together with the adornment of my qualities with that suit upon my back will i ravish her first kill him and in her eyes there shall she see my valour which will then be a torment to her contempt he on the ground my speech of insultment ended on his dead body to the court i'll knock her back put her home again she hath despised me rejoicingly and i'll be merry in my revenge re-enter pisanio with the clothes be those the garments ay my noble lord how long is it since she went to milford avon she can scarce be there yet bring this apparel to my chamber that is the second thing that i have commanded thee the third is that thou wilt be a voluntary mute to my design be but duteous and true preferment shall tender itself to thee my revenge is now at milford would i had wings to follow it come and be true exit thou bidst me to my loss for true to thee were to prove false which i will never be to him that is most true to milford go and find not her whom thou pursuest flow flow you heavenly blessings on her this fool's speed be crossed with slowness labour be his meed exit scene six wales before the cave of bellarius enter imogen in boy's clothes <sighs> i see a man's life is a tedious one i have tired myself and for two nights together have made the ground my bed i should be sick but that my resolution helps me milford when from the mountain top pisanio showed thee thou wast within a ken o oh, jove i think foundations fly the wretched such i mean where they should be relieved two beggars told me i could not miss my way will poor folks lie that have afflictions on them knowing tis a punishment or trial yes no wonder when which ones scarce tell true to lapse in fullness is sorer than to lie for need and falsehood is worse in kings than beggars my dear lord thou art one of the false ones now i think on thee my hunger's gone but even before i was at point to sink for food but what is this here is a path to it tis some savage hold i will best not call i dare not call yet famine ere clean it overthrow nature makes it valiant plenty and peace breeds cowards hardness ever of hardiness is mother <clears throat> ho who's here if anything that's civil speak if savage take or lend ho no answer then i'll enter best draw my sword and if mine enemy but fear the sword like me 
he'll scarcely look on it such a foe good heavens exit to the cave enter bellarius guiderius and arviragus you polydor have proved best woodman and are master of the feast cadwal and i will play the cook and servant tis our match the sweat of industry would dry and die but for the end it works to come our stomachs will make what's homely savoury weariness can snore upon the flint when resty sloth finds the down pillow hard now peace be here poor house that keeps thyself i am truly weary i am weak with toil yet strong in appetite there is cold meat to the cave we'll browse on that whilst what we have killed be cooked Bellarius, looking into the cave stay come not in but that it eats our victuals i should think here were a fairy what's the matter sir by jupiter an angel or if not an earthly paragon behold divineness no elder than a boy re-enter imogen good masters harm me not before i entered here i called and thought to have begged or bought what i have took good troth i have stole naught nor would not though i had found gold strewed in the floor here's money for my meat i would have left it on the board so soon as i had made my meal and parted with prayers for the provider money youth all gold and silver rather turn to dirt as tis no better reckoned but of those who worship dirty gods i see you're angry no if you kill me for my fault i should have died had i not made it with a bound to milford haven what's your name fidele sir i have a kinsman who is bound for italy he embarked at milford to whom being going almost spent with hunger i am fallen in this offence pretty fair youth think us no churls nor measure our good minds by this rude place we live in well encountered tis almost night you shall have better cheer ere you depart and thanks to stay and eat it boys bid him welcome were you a woman youth i should woo hard but be your groom and honesty i bid for you as i do buy i'll make it my comfort he is a man i'll love him as my brother and such a welcome as i'd give to him after long absence such is yours most welcome i'll be sprite before you fall mongst friends mongst friends if brothers would it had been so that they had been my father's sons then had my price been less and so more equal ballasting to thee posthumous he rings at some distress would i could free it oh i whate'er it be what pain it cost what danger god hark boys whispering great men that had a court no bigger than this cave that did attend themselves and had the virtue which their own conscience sealed them laying by that nothing gift of differing multitudes could not outpeer these twain pardon me gods i change my sex to be companion with them since leonatus falls it shall be so boys we'll go dress our hunt fair youth come in this course is heavy fasting when we have supped we'll mannerly demand thee of thy story so far as thou wilt speak it pray draw near the night to the owl and morn to the lark less welcome thanks sir i pray draw near exeunt scene seven rome a public place enter two senators and tribunes ah oh, this is a tenor of the emperor's writ that since the common men are now in action against the pannonians and dalmatians and that the legions now in gallia are full weak to undertake our wars against the fallen our britons that we do incite the gentry to this business he creates lucius proconsul and to you the tribunes for this immediate levy he commends his absolute commission 
Long live Caesar. Is Lucius a general of the forces? I Remaining now in Gallia? With those legions which I have spoke of, whereunto your levy must be suppliant. The words of your commission will tie you to the numbers in the time of their dispatch. We will discharge our duty. Exeunt. End of Act Three. Act Four of Cymbeline by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Four, Scene One, Wales, near the cave of Balarius. Enter Clotten. I am near to the place where they should meet. If Pisonio have mapped it truly, how fit his garment served me. Why should his mistress, who was made by him that made the tailor, not be fit too? The rather, saving reverence of the word, for tis said a woman's fitness comes by fits. <laughs> Therein I must play the work man <laughs> i dare speak it to myself for it is not vain glory for a man and his glass to confer in his own chamber i mean the lines of my body are as well drawn as his no less young more strong not beneath him in fortunes beyond him in the advantage of the time above him in birth alike conversant in general services and more remarkable in single oppositions yet this imperseverant thing loves him in my despite what oh, mortality is posthumous thy head which now is growing upon thy shoulders shall within this hour be off thy mistress enforced thy garments cut to pieces before thy face and all this done spurn her home to her father who may haply be a little angry for my so rough usage but my mother having power of his testiness <laughs> shall turn all into my commendations <laughs> my horse is tied up safe out sword and to a sore purpose fortune put them into my hand this is the very description of their meeting place and the fellow dares not deceive me. Exit. Scene two. Before the cave of Bellarius. Enter from the cave Bellarius, Guiderius, Arviragus, and Imogen. Bellarius to Imogen. You are not well. Remain here in the cave. We'll come to you after hunting. Brother, stay here. Are we not brothers? so man and man should be but clay and clay differs in dignity whose dust is both alike i am very sick go you to hunting i'll abide with him so sick i am not yet i am not well but not so citizen a wanton as to seem to die ere sick so please you leave me stick to your journal course the breach of custom is breach of all i am ill but your being by me cannot amend me society is no comfort to one not sociable i am not very sick since i can reason of it pray you trust me here i'll rob none but myself and let me die stealing so poorly i love thee i have spoke it how much the quantity the weight as much as i do love my father what how how if it be sin to say so sir i yoke me and my good brother's fault 
I know not why I love this youth, and I have heard you say love's reasons without reason. The beer at door, and a demand who is shall die, I'd say, my father, not this youth. O oh, noble strain, O oh, worthiness of nature, breed of greatness, cowards, father, cowards, and base things, sire, base. Nature hath meal and bran, contempt and grace. I not their father. Yet who this should be doth miracle itself loved before me. Tis the ninth hour of the morn. Brother, farewell. I wish you sport. You health. So please you, sir. These are kind creatures. Gods, what lies I have heard. Our courtiers say all savage but at court. Experience, oh, thou disprovest report. The imperious seas breed monsters. For the dish poor tributary rivers as sweet fish. I am sick still, heart sick. Pisanio, I'll now taste of thy drug. I could not stir him. He said he was gentle, but unfortunate, dishonestly afflicted, but yet honest. Thus did he answer me, yet said, hereafter I might no more. To the field, to the field. We leave you for this time, go in and rest. Will not be long away. Pray be not sick, for you must be our housewife. Well or ill, I am bound to you and shalt be ever exit imogen to the cave this youth howe'er distressed appears he hath had good ancestors how angel-like he sings but his neat cookery he cut our roots and characters and sauced our broths as juno had been sick and he her dieter nobly he yokes us smiling with a sigh as if the sigh was that it was for not being such a smile the smile mocking the sigh that it would fly from so divine a temple to commix with winds that sailors rail at i do note that grief and patience bruited in him both mingle their spurs together grow patience and let the stinking elder grief untwine his perishing root with the increasing vine it is great morning Come away. Who's there? Enter Clotten. I cannot find those runagates. That villain hath mocked me. I am faint. Those runagates? Means ye not us? I partly know him. Tis Clotten, the son of the queen. I fear some ambush. I saw him not these many years, and yet I know tis he. We are held as outlaws hence. He is but one. You and my brother search what companies are near. Pray you away. Let me alone with him. Exeunt Bellarius and Averagus. So, what are you that fly me thus? Some villain mountaineers. I have heard of such. What slave art thou? A thing. More slavish did I ne'er than answering a slave without a knock. Thou art a robber, a lawbreaker, a villain. You be, you thief. To who? To thee? What art thou? Have not I an arm as big as thine? A heart as big? Thy words, I grant, are bigger, for I wear not my dagger in my mouth. Say what thou art, why I should yield to thee. Thou villain base, know'st me not for my clothes. No, nor thy tailor, rascal, who is thy grandfather. He made those clothes which, as it seems, make thee. Thou precious varlet, my tailor made them not. Hence, then, and thank the man that gave them thee. Thou art some fool. I am loath to bait thee. Thou injurious they hear but my name, and... Tremble. What's thy name? Clotten, thou villain. Clotten, thou double villain, be thy name. I cannot tremble at it. Were it toad or adder, spider, twouldn't move me sooner. 
to thy further fear nay to thy mere confusion thou shalt know i am son to the queen i am sorry for it not seeming so worthy as thy birth art not afeard those that i reverence those i fear the wise at fools i laugh not fear them die the death when i have slain thee with my proper hand i'll follow those that even now fled hems and on the gates of lud's town set your head yield rustic mountaineer exeunt fighting re-enter belarius and arviragus eh, no companies abroad none in the world you did mistake him sure i cannot tell long is it since i saw him but time hath nothing blurred those lines of favour which then he wore the snatches in his voice and bursts of speaking were as his i am absolute twas very cloten in this place we left them i wish my brother make good time with him you say he is so foul being scarce made up i mean to man he had not apprehension of roaring terrors for the effect of judgment is oft the cause of fear but see thy brother re-enter guiderius with clotten's head this clotten was a fool an empty purse there was no money in it not hercules could have knocked out his brains for he had none <laughs> yet i not doing this the fool had borne my head as i do his what hast thou done i am perfect what cut off one clotten's head son to the queen after his own report who called me traitor mountaineer and swore with his own single hand he'd take us in displace our heads where thank the gods they grow and set them on Ludstown. We are all undone. Why, worthy father, what have we to lose but that he swore to take our lives? The law protects not us. Then why should we be tender to let an arrogant piece of flesh threat us? Play judge and executioner all himself, for we do fear the law. What company discover you abroad? No single soul can we set eye on, but in all safe reason he must have some attendance though his humour was nothing but mutation ay and that from one bad thing to worse not frenzy not absolute madness could so far have raved to bring him here alone although perhaps it may be heard at court that such as we cave here hunt here are outlaws and in time may make some stronger head the which he hearing as it is like him might break out and swear he'll fetch us in yet is not probable to come alone either he so undertaking or they so suffering then on good ground we fear if we do fear this body hath a tail more perilous than the head let ordinance come as the gods foresay it howsoever my brother hath done well i had no mind to hunt this day the boy fidelis sickness did make my way long forth with his own sword which he did wave against my throat i have taken his head from him i'll throw it into the creek behind our rock and let it to the sea and tell the fishes he is the queen's son clarton that's all i reck exit i fear it will be revenged would polydor thou hadst not done t though valour becomes thee well enough would i had done it so the revenge alone pursued me polydor i love thee brotherly but envy much thou hast robbed me of this deed i would revenge as that possible strength might meet would seek us through and put us to our answer well tis done we'll hunt no more to-day nor seek for danger where there's no profit i prithee to our rock you and fidel play the cooks i'll stay till hasty polydor returns and bring him to dinner presently poor sick fidelic 
I'll willingly to him. To gain his colour, I'd let her perish of such potent blood, and praise myself for charity. Exit. O oh, thou goddess, thou divine nature, how thyself thou blazonest in these two princely boys. They are as gentle as Zephyr's blowing below the violet, not wagging his sweet head, and yet as rough their royal blood in chafed as the rudest wind, that by the top doth take the mountain pine, and make him stoop to the vale. Tis wonder that an invisible instinct should frame them to royalty and learned, honour untaught, civility not seen from other, valour that wildly grows in them but yields a crop as if it had been sowed yet still it's strange what cloton's being here to us portends or what his death will bring us re-enter guiderius there's my brother i have sent cloton's clock pole down the stream an embassy to his mother his body is hostage for his return solemn music my ingenious instrument hark polydor it sounds but what occasion hath cadwell now to give it motion hark is he at home he went hence even now what does he mean since death of my dearest mother it did not speak before how solemn things should answer solemn accidents the matter triumphs for nothing and lamenting toys is jollity for apes and grief for boys is Cadwell mad? Re enter Arviragus with Imogen as dead, bearing her in his arms. Look, here he comes and brings the dire occasion in his arms of what we blame him for. The bird is dead that we have made so much on. I had rather have skipped from sixteen years of age to sixty to have turned my leaping time into a crutch than have seen this. O oh, sweetest, fairest lily, my brother wears thee not, he won half so well, as when thou grew'st thyself. O oh, melancholy, whoever yet could sound thy bottom, find the ooze to show what coast thy sluggish prayer might easiest to harbour in. Thou blessed thing, Jove knows what man thou mightst have made, but I, thou diedst a most rare boy of melancholy how found you him stark as you see thus smiling as some fly had tickled slumber not as death's dart being laughed at his right cheek reposing on a cushion where other floor his arms thus lead i thought he slept and put my clouted brogues from up my feet whose rudeness answered my steps too loud why he but sleeps if he be gone he'll make his grave a bed with female fairies will his tomb be haunted and worms will not come to thee with fairest flowers whilst summer lasts and i live here fidelly i'll sweeten thy sad grave thou shalt not lack the flower that's like thy face pale primrose nor the azured herbal like thy vein no nor the leaf of eglantine whom not to slander hath sweetened not thy breath the ruddock would with charitable bill o oh, bill so shaming those rich left heirs that let their fathers lie without a monument bring thee all this yea and furred must besides when flowers are none to winter ground thy cost prithee have done and do not play in wench like words with that which is so serious let us bury him and not protract with admiration what is now due debt to the grave say where shall slay him my good eurifile our mother be it so and let us polydor thou know our voices have got the mannish crack sing him to the ground as once our mother used like note and words save that eurifully must be for daily cadwell i cannot sing i'll weep and word it with thee 
for knots of sorrow out of tune are worse than priests and fanes that lie will speak it then great griefs i see medicine the less for croton is quite forgotten he was a queen's son boys and though he came our enemy remember he was paid for that though mean and mighty rotting together have one dust yet reverence that angel of the world doth make distinction of place between high and low our foe was princely and though you took his life as being our foe yet bury him as a prince pray you fetch him hither there sit his body is as good as ajax's when neither are alive if you go fetch him we'll say our song the while brother begin exit bellarius nay cardwell i must lay his head to the east my father hath a reason for it tis true come on then and remove him so begin fear no more the heat of the sun nor the furious winter's rages thou thy worldly task hast done home art gone and tain thy wages golden lads and girls all must as chimney sweepers come to dust fear no more the frown of the great thou art past the tyrant's stroke care no more to clothe and eat to thee the reed is as the oak the sceptre learning physic must all follow this and come to dust fear no more the lightning flash nor the all-dreaded thunderstone fear not slander censure rash thou hast finished joy and moan all, all lovers, lovers young all, all lovers, lovers must, must consign, consign to, to thee and, and come, come to, to dust. dust no exerciser harm thee nor no witchcraft charm thee ghost unlaid forbear thee nothing ill come near thee quiet, quiet consummation have and, and renowned, renowned be, be thy grave, grave. re-enter bellarius with the body of croton we have done our obsequies come lay him down here's a few flowers but about midnight more the herbs that have on them cold dew of the night are strewings fittest for graves upon their faces you were as flowers now withered even so these herblets shall which we upon you throw come on away apart upon your knees the ground that gave them first has them again their pleasures here are past so is their pain exeunt bellarius guiderius and arviragus imogen awaking <sighs> yes sir to milford haven which is the way i thank you by yond bush pray how far thither arts pitikins can it be six mile yet i have gone all night faith i'll lie down and sleep but soft no bedfellow <gasps> oh gods and goddesses seeing the body of clotten these flowers are like the pleasures of the world this bloody man the care on it oh, i hope i dream for so i thought i was a cave-keeper and cook to honest creatures but this not so twas but a bowl of nothing shot at nothing which the brain makes of fumes our very eyes are sometimes like our judgments blind good faith i tremble still with fear but if there be yet left in heaven as small a drop of pity as a wren's eye feared gods a part of it the dream's here still even when i wake it is without me as within me not imagined felt a headless man the garments of posthumus i know the shape of his leg this is his hand his foot mercurial his martial thigh the bronze of hercules but his jovial face murder in heaven how tis gone pisanio 
all curses mad it hecuba gave the greeks and mine to boot be darted on thee thou conspired with that irregular devil clotten hast here cut off my lord to write and read be henceforth treacherous damn pisanio hath with his forged letters damn pisanio from this most bravest vessel of the world struck the main top o oh, posthumus alas where is thy head where's that ay me where is that pisanio might have killed thee at the heart and left this head on how should this be pisanio tis he and clotten melis and luca in them have laid this woe here oh tis pregnant pregnant the drug he gave me which he said was precious and cordial to me have i not found it murderous to the senses that confirms it home this is pisanio's deed and clotten's oh give colour to my pale cheek with thy blood that we the horrider may seem to those which chance to find us oh my lord my lord <laughs> falls on the body enter lucius a captain and other officers and a soothsayer to them the legions garrisoned in gallia after your will have crossed the sea attending you here at milford haven with your ships they are in readiness but what from rome the senate hath stirred up the confiners and gentlemen of italy most willing spirits that promised noble service and they come under the conduct of bold Yakimo, Siena's brother. When expect you them? With the next benefit of the wind. This foilness makes our hopes fair. Command our present numbers be mustered. Bid the captains look to it. Now, sir, what have you dreamed of late of this war's purpose? Last night the very gods showed me a vision i fast and prayed for their intelligence thus i saw jove's bird the roman eagle winged from the spongy south to this part of the west there vanished in the sunbeams which portends unless my sins abuse my divination success to the roman host dream often so and never false soft oh while trunk is here without his top the ruin speaks that sometime it was a worthy building oh a page or dead or sleeping on him but dead rather for nature doth abhor to make his bed for the defunct will sleep upon the dead let's see the boy's face he's alive my lord he'll then instruct us of this body young one inform us of thy fortunes for it seems they crave to be demanded who is this thou makest thy bloody pillow or who is he that otherwise a noble nature did hath altered that good picture what's thy interest in this sad wreck how came it who is it what art thou i am nothing or if not nothing to be were better this was my master a very valiant briton and a good that here by mountaineers lies slain alas there is no more such masters i may wander from east to occident cry out for service try many all good serve truly never find such another master ah good youth thou movest no less with thy complaining than thy master and bleeding say his name good friend richard duchamp if i do lie and do no harm by it though the gods hear i hope they'll pardon it say you sir thy name fidele sir thou dost to prove thyself the very same thy name well fits thy faith thy faith thy name wilt take thy chance with me 
I will not say thou shalt be so well mastered, but be sure, no less beloved. The Roman emperor's letters, sent by a consul to me, should not sooner than thine own worth prefer thee. Go with me. I'll follow, sir. But first, and please the gods, I'll hide my master from the flies as deep as these poor pickaxes can dig. And when with wild wood leaves and weeds I have strewed his grave, and on it said a century of prayers, such as I can, twice over, I'll weep and sigh, and leaving so his service, follow you. So please you entertain me. Ay, good youth, and rather father thee than master thee. My friends, the boy has taught us manly duties. Let us find out the prettiest daisy plot we can, and make him with our pikes and partisans a grave. Come, arm him. Boy, he is preferred by thee to us, and he shall be interred as soldiers can. Be cheerful, wipe thine eyes. Some falls are means the happier to arise. Exeunt. Scene three. A room in Cymbeline's palace. Enter Cymbeline, lords, Pisanio, and attendants. Again, and bring me word how tis with her. Exit an attendant. A fever with the absence of her son, a madness of which her life's in danger. Heavens, how deeply you at once do touch me. Imogen, the great part of my comfort gone. My queen upon a desperate bed and in a time when fearful wars point at me her son gone so needful for this present it strikes me past the hope of comfort but for thee fellow who needs must know of her departure and dost seem so ignorant will enforce it from thee by a sharp torture sir my life is yours i humbly set it at your will but for my mistress I nothing know where she remains, why gone, nor when she purposes return. Beseech your highness, hold me your loyal servant. Good, my liege, the day that she was missing he was here. I dare be bound he's true, and shall perform all parts of his subjection loyally. The Glarton, there wants no diligence in seeking him, and will, no doubt, be found. The time is troublesome. To Pisanio we'll slip you for a season but our jealousy does yet depend so please your majesty the roman legions off from gallia drawn are landed on your coast with a supply of roman gentlemen by the senate sent now for the counsel of my son and queen i am amazed with matter good my liege your preparation can affront no less than what you hear of come more for more you're ready the wand is but to put those powers in motion that long to move. I thank you. Let's withdraw, and meet the time as it seeks us. We fear not what can from Italy annoy us, but we grieve at chances here. <laughs> Away! Exeunt all but Pisanio. I heard no letter from my master since I wrote him. Imogen was slain. Tis strange nor hear i from my mistress who did promise to yield me often tidings neither know i what is betide to cloten but remain perplexed in all the heaven still must work wherein i am false i am honest not true to be true these present wars shall find i love my country even to the note of the king or our fall in them all other doubts by time let them be cleared Fortune brings in some boats that are not steered. Exit. Scene four. Wales. Before the cave of Belarius. Enter Belarius, Guiderius, and Arviragus. The noise is round about us. Let us from it. What pleasure so find we in life to look at from action and adventure? Nay, what hope have we in hiding us? this way the romans must or for britons slay us or receive us for barbarous and unnatural revolts during their use and slay us after sons we'll hire to the mountains there secure us 
to the king's party there's no going newness of cloton's death we being not known not mustered among the bands may drive us to a render where we have lived and so extort from that which we have done whose answer would be death drawn on with torture this is sir a doubt in such a time nothing becoming you nor satisfying us it is not likely that when they hear the roman horses neigh behold their courted fires have both their eyes and ears so cloyed importantly as now that they will waste their time upon our note to know from whence we are or oh, i am known of many in the army many years though cloten then but young you see not war him from my remembrance and besides the king hath not deserved my service nor your loves who find in my exile the want of breeding the certainty of this hard life i hopeless to have the courtesy your cradle promised but to be still hot summer's tanlings and the shrinking slaves of winter then be so better to cease to be pray sir to the army i and my brother are not known yourself so out of thought and thereto so o'ergrown cannot be questioned by the sun that shines i you thither what thing is it that i never did see man die scarce ever looked on blood but that of coward hares hot goats and venison never bestrid a horse save one that had a rider like myself who ne'er wore rowel nor iron on his heel i am ashamed to look upon the holy sun to have the benefit of his blessed beams remaining so long a poor unknown by heavens i'll go if you will bless me sir and give me leave i'll take the better care but if you will not the hazard therefore do fall on me by the hands of romans so say i amen no reason i since of your lives you set so slight a valuation should reserve my cracked one to more care have with you boys if in your country wars you chance to die that is my bed too lads and there i'll lie lead lead aside the time seems long their blood thinks scorn till it fly out and shows them princes born excellent end of act four